One of the many great attributes of Aberdeen is that we have one of the best sets of records of any city in the world. And I'm particularly pleased to say that we've come to, to have in our possession uh, these incredibly precious diaries of Robert Stephen, an engineer in the 51st Highland Division in World War I. A very rare thing to have uh, that is the memoirs of an ordinary soldier at that time. And I would like to read a few excerpts from these diaries to you today. Wednesday, 27th of September, 1916. This is the day we leave on the first stage of our journey to France. On the morning, I visited the shop, then B and I got our photos taken. And after dinner, I got ready to go, packing up and bidding goodbye to Jill. We started for the station where there were many friends to see us off, then goodbye to all of my friends. It tells in a fellow to shake hands and leave it all behind. 3.40, the green flag is waved and the train moved slowly out of the station. And as I watched my friends, beautiful Aberdeen and home, getting faint in the distance, a lump grew in my throat, which I tried hard to swallow, but it was no use. The last of home for some time, but God leads right. I felt myself casting everything on him. Monday, 2nd of October, the Connaught of Dublin. At six o'clock, we boarded the ship, and at 7.30, we heard gangway ashore cast off, and we were all clear now out of island home that we loved so well. The night was dark and the breeze blowing, and Finlay and I went right to the stern of the ship where we had a good view. As I watched the lights of England disappear in the darkness, all kinds of thoughts passed through my mind. The folks at home, etc. And as I stood alone in the stern of the ship with the rain coming fairly heavy and the ship dipping bonny, and my eyes homeward turned and asked God to bring me safe back to all. Sunday, the 21st of January, 1917. I'm having a walk through a very dense forest in Marshfield and writing this while leaning on a tree. All around quietness, a little snow on the ground. 11.30, minding on the folks at home, all of the meetings. How lonely to be here in a French forest, but it is lovely. Tuesday, 20th of March, 1917. A letter from Father with the sad news of Mary Marshall's death in the fighting at the East. Done for her nobly as a nurse to a British wounded and gone to a better clime. Friday, the 6th of April, 1917. A day off. A premature shell from the Long Tom burst not far from our billet and killed three and wounded 15. Oh, it was terrible. I saw it all, just heard the crash and ran out, and I shall never forget the sights of poor fellows all lying as they had been struck, one man with his leg blown off and quite conscious, but I heard he died later. Oh, it makes us wish the war was over, but God, who allows it to go on, will stop it in his good way. Monday, 9th of April, 1917, 6 o'clock, the boys went over in the awful roar of the guns and chased them back, and back they must go. Then the wounded started to come in, the poor fellows, some awful sights. German wounded and ours all mixed. 1 p.m. At last we got to our job and what a sight met our gaze. Dead, wounded, all lying about. It was awful. I saw a captain dead who spoke to us the night before. A great lot of prisoners about, some willingly helping to carry down the wounded. And others sent away down the line. And on the whole, it was a sight and experience I shall never forget. Sunday 20th of May 1917, we were told our job, which was to go out and dig a new front line beyond our own, and it did not do just a good job. I was in squad number one. Fritz started the shell very heavy, and we were turning along the railway embankment, which is a terrible mess with a lot of dead about. Then came a shell, which lands about five yards from us. A dud. As I said, lucky dud, God leads. The shelling was heavy and then we came to the chemical works which was shelled very heavily and just as we were about to cross the railway a shell burst amongst us and the shouts of the men. I turned back. Most of my squad number one went on and then we started to do the best in our power for our mates. Five wounded and one killed, one died of wounds. It was pitch dark. We could not see their wounds nor stretchers to be got and shells coming in over the score. Oh, it was awful. I shall never forget the night I dressed some of the wounds. J. Lauder, then we went off for stretchers. Monday morning, all done up and experienced the worst night ever, had or saw. But I thank God for his love and care over me and guiding me thus far. God is good.
Sunday evening, the 20th of May, 1917, at Fonpo, a front. Sapper Bob Taylor killed. Sapper Bill Gillespie wounded. A lot of small bits in him. Sapper Bill Russell wounded. Hips. Sapper Jim Lauder wounded. Pelvis bad. Sapper George Simpson wounded. Armpit and leg bad. Lance Corporal Harry Harper wounded. Arm and pelvis. Jim Lauder died of his wounds. May 1917. Monday, the 11th of November, 1918. Hostilities ceased today at 11 a.m. Great rejoicing all over. I heard the bells as I was going over open country on Doll's Back. I stopped to make sure it was right. Oh, happy day. Thank God. <laughs>